Whew, what's going on everybody? It is Jake. Um back at it again. So I wanted to be on here the past two days, but um I may be going to the hospital tomorrow or tonight. I'm not too sure. So we'll figure it out. Um as some of you guys know, I, I told you guys that my migraine cycle started. So really quick to get that out of the way. Um every single spring my migraine cycle starts. And it doesn't go away. Like I will have a migraine. Um, I have cluster migraines, which are completely different. They're they're not as common, but they hurt a lot worse. They're a lot more painful. Um, if you look it up online, I mean, I can't really say this because I'm not a woman. But supposedly it's like worse than childbirth, whatever. Um, but I feel I'm feeling okay right now. But basically, they happen every single day until I do something about it. And um, usually I take prednisone I get prescribed steroids and then that completely takes the cycle away so um, I haven't slept in about five days around I've had like imagine within a week you get like an hour of sleep maybe at the most like or two hours you know um, each night so I'm just dead right now I'm brain dead I can't think I'm tired of resting because that's all I've been doing um, I'm on all these steroids and it's not working so basically my doctor he he recommended me going to the emergency room he thinks i should um everyone thinks i should but i got class tuesday and you know once you go you kind of surrender yourself and like they have control over what happens so it's just bad because my last class is this tuesday and i have all this work due and i just can't really go so basically if i'm feeling terrible tonight then i'm going to go um, and I'll let you guys know, like last time I was in the emergency room, even though that was for something different, which ended up being the spiritual upgrade, that's why they couldn't find anything wrong with me. Um, you know, and this isn't the same thing, but I still, I recorded a video, um, in the hospital cause I thought it'd be funny. And, uh, so I might do that again. If it happens, I'll let you guys know. Um, so yeah, I haven't been on here in two days cause I have no sleep. I'm just in pain. Um, basically imagine someone like stabbing you in your right eye. I get out only on my right side and it feels like a hundred pounds of pressure right here. And then on both sides right here and my veins on my head on both sides. Um, it's usually only my right side cause that's a cluster, but because it's spring and even though I'm not allergic, everything's blooming and all people's alley. Like right now is the, the one season where people just feel the worst. And so I, I feel terrible. But this happens every single year, and um, every single time I take the prednisone and it works, but it's not working this time. And I took 60 milligrams yesterday and then 50 today. And I guess 110 milligrams of, of prednisone is a lot. So I'm just super hot right now, super just like I just feel weird. Um, so I haven't been on in two days, so apologize. But moving on to other things. So two two things one of them is i i wanted to do a channeling and, I, and i'll probably end up doing one when i feel a little bit better um about <clears throat> the visions that i've been having and i've been meditating a lot and i've been seeing a lot of a lot of things even though i'm really sick right now i'm still getting stuff and what i was getting in the meditation kind of like you know when i get my meditation going and I get the telepathy going and I get messages and then I bring them in here, you know. So I did the meditation. So without bringing them in here, what I got, uh, when it comes to the place with the five moons, basically, it's like I can tell you guys what information. What I was getting was very interesting. I didn't get a name, so I'm going to try to get a name in the future, but names don't really matter. Um, I think it's an Andromedan aspect of myself. Like I said, I was getting Andromedan energies. And basically what I was getting was kind of what I already confirmed, which is funny because we, we always kind of know what's going on. It was weird. It was, it was basically saying like that it was glad that I was connecting and that this is another aspect of my energy right now that's like in the Andromedan, you know. So basically I thought that the planet was Uranus, you know, Uranus, and I thought it was somewhere here. And what I'm getting is that it's a planet in the Andromedan galaxy. Which a lot of my visions are from there, so that makes sense. And basically they were saying that um, the reason I was getting that was because... Okay, so two things. So the reason I was getting that was because 
the energies, it's weird. It's They were basically saying energy doesn't have, you know, like there's no closed doors with energy. Energy is like water. Water becomes whatever it, it, it goes into, you know, and basically energy is just all around. There's no barriers. So they were saying that it was very positive that I was receiving this information, even though it's not me in this life, because those energies from out there, I'm incorporating here. So I'm, I'm sure that makes sense. I just, I'm not even here right now. So I apologize. Um, but basically what I'm getting is just that, you know, and I even might put my sunglasses on because this screen is just killing me right now. I'm in so much pain. Um, anyways, so they were saying that the energies are really positive because the energies are needed here. And even though we are all connected in this multidimensional um way and we all have these other aspects of ourselves you know even if we don't notice it it's like we're incorporating energies from like the universe omniverse whatever you want to think about and basically in a smaller way like this andromeda for example i'm incorporating the energies there and they're flowing and they're coming here and they're being spread across earth they're being spread across from us so all you guys you know arcturian reptilian syrian pleiadian whatever you yell, you know, anything. Um, you are incorporating those energies from where you come from and your other aspects, not just whatever you resonate with in this lifetime. It's like they're all mixed in, you know. And what I was getting was that Gaia is very, you know, special and unique, which we all know. But basically, you know, Gaia is like, like for the animal part, it's like a zoo of all these animals that usually wouldn't be together and all these different um biological components and it's just a place of life of all different forms of life like there's so many different places in the universe where all these things like come from in a way you know like it's very unique so you can say like a zoo mentality not just thinking of animals but energy like everything a guy is just unique so it's almost like a rainbow energy plan where everything's incorporated um, but it's incorporated so we can have this great learning experience and it's very unique. So we should very, you know, we should be very grateful and proud of our Gaia. So these energies are basically coming in right now. And even though we don't know why um, it's needed and they're helping. So that was one side of it. The other side was, I was kind of correct, was that um, I guess I'm part of some like, I'm getting the word fleet. I don't really know. I even I should look up the definition before I say that. But I'm getting the word fleet, and I'm basically feeling like there's a group that's going off to explore potentials of life, and they want to almost create another place for in the future it develops into the first, second dimensional life forms, and then, you know, they can help out with them and just, you know, I mean, part of it is being, like, kind of like a creator being in a way. I know a lot of people, like, on Hukalo, other places, they think creator being in a different aspect, but I'm not talking about what they're talking about. I'm talking about, in general, that we have God in us and the consciousness, so, you know, it is our duty, like how I've said, there's the planets, and then there's, like, the, the trees, and then there's humans, and we're, like, the higher consciousness, and we represent and take care of those other things, like the earth, plants, animals, so it's the duty to create this, it's like a garden, you're basically seeding consciousness, so what I'm getting is that that's what they were doing. But that was really all what was the business for, for me. You know, that's all they were going to give me was just that. That's what they were doing. But for some reason, it was a good thing because whatever energies were coming through needed to be brought here. So there's that. Um, and then the other thing before I start reading, because I'm going to read some of the Law of One, is I don't know if you guys have seen this new thing. I want to, I'm going to buy some software when I get some extra money. It's like $200. Um like recording software so I can go online, I can show you guys what I'm looking at, we can talk, do what all these other people do, because I don't do that, and I would love to do that, um, so I'm going to do that, but if you guys haven't looked, on YouTube, if you go to Google, and you type in YouTube, and you enter it, it will say, like I can bring it on my phone, but I don't want to waste time, apparently, and this, I'm going to give you my perception of what I think is happening, just what I'm intuitively getting, as soon as I, I saw it, I'm like, oh, this has to be it. So they are incorporating on YouTube kids now. Like you guys know the YouTube kids has been 
sent all this very dark stuff and just you know kids and like animation stuff in a very disgusting way and the youtube kids is just very negative but anyways they are incorporating ufos conspiracy theories um david ike stuff on reptilians and basically the cabal and all that and they're like that's being found now in the youtube kids section okay so basically youtube's acting like they don't know why this is popping up and and so they got to remove this and now they're making they're making another joke on conspiracies and people who believe in what we believe in basically so this is what i think they are doing internally this is my perspective i think they are using this as a way to kind of like remove freedom of speech even more like limit the internet limit what we are able to put out so I think YouTube, because they're owned by Google, and then Google with that alphabet company, and then you know the cabal and all the stuff that they're all related. It's all really messed up. Don't want to get into that. That's a different video. But if you want me to, let me know. And basically, I believe that YouTube is pushing all that stuff in the kids section to stir up things so they have another reason, and they will get people who are parents on board to get this content that we bring out and then like just the conspiracy in general and the reptilians like i said and ufos and the the moon landing being fake and all that all that stuff that they're talking about i think that they are trying to find another way to get rid of it so if they have parents and all these other people causing an uproar siding with them it's going to help them out even more because they're going to have they're screwing with the public and then they're going to have part of the public agree with them and support them in removing this type of information. So that's what I think from that. Um, I do believe the Internet's going to change. I just have a feeling something's going to happen um, for the good or for the better. I don't know. But I just I feel it. I feel something's going to happen. And I, I've talked about this with, with uh, certain people, a certain number of people recently, like two people. Um, I get a feeling when something's about to happen, and for example, um, I can't pronounce it, the Umamoa, whatever, that rock ship thing that was on secure team and everywhere that, you know, basically on the news, and it passed by us, and people thought it was a rock, and people thought it was a ship, so three days, like I told you guys, three days before that even popped up in the media at all, I was doing dishes, and I got a vision of it. And I got a vision that this is going to be a big thing. And at the time, you know, I didn't think anything of it. I'm like, okay, I got an image of whatever this thing was, like in my mind, in my in my um, third eye. And I was just told, focus on this because this is going to be talked about. And I'm, I was just was like, okay, so some rock things coming and they're going to talk about it. And I, I threw it to the side. Three days later, it's all over. Um, that bridge thing just happened where the bridge got crumpled down and people died. Um, about you know 10 hours before that I got a feeling something's gonna happen today something bad's gonna happen or there's gonna be another false flag or something and then that happened so I have a feeling intuitive feeling that there's gonna be just more stuff like that going on and then now with this YouTube thing and the alien thing and, and the YouTube kids it's just like they're trying to censor even more and also now they have that Wikipedia thing I'm sure you guys heard about where with all conspiracy stuff on, on the internet, on YouTube, they're going to have a Wikipedia thing that like counters um, the conspiracy or the th whatever. And that's so, to me, it just shows that they're really failing and it shows that they, they don't have anything else to really... Um, use in their backup because wikipedia can be edited by anybody i know everyone who's talking about this says the same thing but it's the truth i can go on wikipedia right now and i can go on something that you know just anything like world war ii and i can change the history of whatever is in there i mean anybody can do it so the fact that they're using wikipedia is just like to me it's like child's play it's like really like they're getting desperate so at the same time, we're winning, the, the positive is rising, and they're running out of options. So they're going to get very um, just aggressive with their tactics. But the more aggressive you are, the less precise and the less wisdom they're going to use. So it's going to do more damage to them in the future. So 
those are my things basically. So the migraine thing, I'm, I feel like I'm dying right now. I'm not even awake. I know I shouldn't be reading, but I want to. Um, connecting to spirituality just helps with my pain. Um, and then there was that vision. So I gave you guys that information. Uh, and then the YouTube thing. So I think that's very interesting. So um, let's get back into this law of one. But I wanted to talk about those things, give you guys my opinion. I personally think they're incorporating all of this stuff into the YouTube kids because it's just a really low blow. That's all it is. you know. So nothing to worry about. I don't think it's anything to worry about yet. But I do feel like there's going to be some censorship going on um with youtube soon so if anything else happens i'm glad to talk about it let's get back into this so the law of one book two let's continue all right so this is where uh we left off could you define sexual energy transfer and expand upon its meaning please Energy transfer implies the release of potential energies across, shall we say, a potentiated space. The sexual energy transfers occur due to the polarizations of two mind-body-spirit complexes, each of which have some potential difference one to the other. The nature of the transfer of energy or of the blockage of this energy is then a function of the interaction of these two potentials. In the cases where transfer takes place, you may liken this to a circuit being closed. You may also see this activity as all experiential activities as a creator experiencing itself. Could this then be the primal mechanism for the creator to experience itself? This is not a proper term. Perhaps the adjectives would be one appropriate way of the creator knowing itself, for in each interaction, no matter what the distortion, the creator is experiencing itself. The bisexual knowing of the creator by itself has a potential for two advantages. Firstly, in the green ray activated being, there is the potential for a direct and simple analog of what you may call joy, the spiritual or metaphysical nature which exists in intelligent energy. This is a great aid to comprehension of a truer nature of beingness. The other potential advantage of bisexual reproductive acts is the possibility of a sacramental understanding or connection, shall we say, with the gateway to intelligent infinity. For with appropriate preparation, work in what you may call magic may be done, and experiences of intelligent infinity may be had. The positively oriented individuals concentrating upon this method of reaching intelligent infinity then, excuse me, through the seeking of the act of will, or the act of will, are able to direct this infinite intelligence to the work these entities desire to do whether it be knowledge of service or ability, to heal or whatever service to others is desired. These are two advantages of this particular method of the creator experiencing itself. As we have said before, the corollary of the strength of this particular energy transfer is that it opens the door, shall we say, to the individual mind-body-spirit complex's desire to serve in an infinite number of ways um, of ways and other self thus polarizing towards positive can you expand somewhat on the concept that this action not only allows the creator to know itself better but also creates in our density an offspring or makes available the pathway for another entity to enter this density as we have previously said the sexual energy transfers include the red ray transfer which is random and which is a function of the second density attempt to grow to survive, shall we say. This is a proper function of the sexual interaction. The offspring, as you call the incarnated entity, takes on the mind-body complex opportunity offered by this random act or event called the fertilization of egg by seed, which causes an entity to have the opportunity to then enter this density as an incarnate entity. This gives the two who are engaged in this bisexual reproductive energy transfer the potential for great service in this area of the nurturing of the small experience entity as it gains in experience. It shall be of interest at this point to note that there is always the possibility of using these opportunities to polarize towards the negative, and this has been aided by the gradual building up over many thousands of your years of social complex distortions, which create a tendency towards confusion, shall we say, 
or baffling of the service to others aspect of this energy transfer and subsequent opportunities for service to other selves. If a sexual energy transfer occurs in green ray, and I am assuming in this case that there is no red ray energy transfer, does this mean it is impossible for this particular transfer to include fertilization and the birthing of an entity? So that's a really interesting question. This is incorrect. There is always the red ray energy transfer due to the nature of the body complex. The random result of this energy transfer will be as it will be, as a function of the possibility of fertilization at a given time in a given pairing of entities, each entity being undistorted in any vital sense by the yellow or orange ray energies. Thus the gift, shall we say, being given freely, no payment being requested either of the body, of the mind, or of the spirit. The green ray is one of complete universe, uh, universality, of love. This is giving without expectation of return. I was wondering if there was some principle behind the fact that a sexual union does not necessarily lead, lead to fertilization. I'm not interested in the chemical or physical principles of it. I'm interested in whether or not there is some metaphysical principle that leads to the couple having a child or not, or is it purely random? This is random within certain limits. If an entity has reached the seniority whereby it chooses the basic structure of the life experience, this entity may then choose to incarnate in a physical complex which is not capable of reproduction. Thus, we find some entities which have chosen to be unfertile. Other entities, through free will, make use of various devices to ensure non-fertility. Except for these conditions, the condition is random. Thank you. In the previous material, you mentioned magnetic attraction. Would you define and expand upon that term? We use the term to indicate that in your bisexual natures, there is that which is of polarity. This polarity may be seen to be variable according to the, shall we say, male-female polarization of each entity. Be each entity biologically male or female. Thus you may see the magnetism, which two entities with the appropriate balance, male-female versus female-male polarity, meeting and thus feeling the attraction which polarized forces will exert one upon the other. This is the strength of the bisexual mechanism. It does, uh, it does not take an act of will to decide to feel attraction for one who is oppositely polarized sexually. It will occur in an inevitable sense, giving the free flow of energy a proper, shall we say, avenue. This avenue may be blocked by some distortion toward a belief slash condition starting to, stating to the entity that this attraction is not desired. However, the basic mechanism functions as simply as wood, shall we say the magnet in the iron. We have what seems to be an increasing number of entities incarnate here now who have what is called a homosexual orientation. Could you explain and expand upon that concept? So if anyone's wondering about, you know, is homosexually right, whatever, this, this could maybe answer for you guys. Entities of this condition experience a great deal of distortion due to the fact that they have experienced many incarnations as biological male and as biological female. This would not suggest what you call homosexuality in an active phase were it not for the difficult vibratory condition of your planetary sphere. There is what you may call great aura infringement upon your crowded urban areas and your more populous countries, as you call portions of your planetary surface. Under these conditions, the confusions will occur. So, I don't know. I mean, to me, that kind of sounds like, you know, I'm not going to take a stance on this. I mean, I think if someone wants to be gay, they should be gay. I mean, good for them. You know, like, I'm the type where it's like, as long as you don't hit on me, do what you want. As long as you're happy, you're happy, you know. Um, yeah, that's, uh, I don't know. I mean, I can maybe kind of disagree with that. Like, it basically says that there's confusions. So people are going to be like, I don't know. I, I think you guys know what I'm talking about. I kind of disagree with that. But whatever. doesn't matter. You don't have to be entitled to everything. So why does density of population create these confusions? The bisexual reproductive urge has as its goal... Not only the simple reproductive function, 
but more especially the desire to serve others being awakened by this activity. In an overcrowded situation where each mind-body-spirit complex is under constant bombardment from other selves, it is understandable that those who are especially sensitive would not feel the desire to be of service to other selves. This would also increase the probability of a lack of desire or a blockage of the red ray reproductive energy. Okay, so that, that makes more sense. In an uncrowded atmosphere, the same entity would, through the stimulus of feeling the solitude about it, then have much more desire to seek out someone to whom it may be of service, thus regular, um, regularizing the sexual reproductive function. So roughly, how many previous incarnations would a male entity in this incarnation have had to have had in the past as a female to have a highly homosexual orientation in this incarnation? If an entity has had roughly 65% of its incarnations, In the sexual biological body complex, the opposite polarity to its present body complex, this entity is vulnerable to infringement of your urban areas and may perhaps become what you may call of homosexual nature. It is to be noted at this juncture that although it is much more difficult, it is possible in this type of association for an entity to be of great service to another in fidelity and sincere green ray love of a non-sexual nature thus adjusting or lessening the distortions of its sexual impairment. Is there an imprint occurring on the DNA coding of an entity so that sexual biases are imprinted due to early sexual experiences? This is partially correct. Due to the nature of solitary sexual experiences, it is, not, it is in most cases unlikely that you would call masturbation has an imprinting effect upon later experiences. This is similarly true with some of the encounters which might be seen as homosexual among those of this age group. These are often instead innocent exercises in curiosity. However, it is quite accurate that the first experience in which the mind-body-spirit complex is intensely involved will indeed imprint upon the entity for that life experience, a set of preferences. Hmm. Never really thought about it like that. That's interesting. So, does the Orion group use this as a gateway to impress upon entities' preferences, which could be of a negative polarization? I feel like my throat going out, guys. I feel like I'm losing my voice, so I'm sorry if I'm a little raspy. Just as we of the Confederation attempt to beam our light and love, whenever given the opportunity, including sexual opportunities. So the Orion group will use um, an opportunity if it is negatively oriented or if the individual is negatively oriented. Is there any emotional bias that has nothing to do with male-female sexual polarity that can create sexual energy buildup in an entity? Sexual energy buildup is extremely unlikely to occur without sexual bias upon the part of the entity. Perhaps we did not understand your question, but it seems obvious that it would take an entity with the potential for sexual activity to experience a sexual energy buildup. Yeah, it's kind of like a a no shit moment, so makes sense. I was thinking more of the possibility of the Orion group influencing certain members of the Third Reich, who I have read reports of having sexual gratification from the observation of the gassing and killing of entities in the gas chamber. It's pretty messed up. We shall repeat these entities have the potential for sexual energy build up. The choice of stimulus is certainly the choice of the entity. In the case of which you speak, these entities were strongly polarized orange ray, thus finding the energy blockage of power over others, the putting to death being the ultimate power over others. This then being expressed in a sexual manner through solitary, though solitary. In this case, the desire would continue unabated and be virtually unquestionable. You will find, if you observe the entire spectrum of sexual practices among your people, that there are those who experience such gratification from domination over others, either from rape or from means of domination. In each case, this is an example of energy blockage, which is sexual in its nature. 
would the Orion group be able then to impress on entities this orange ray effect? Is this uh, the way that this came about? If we go back to the beginning of third density, there must be a primal cause of this. The cause of this is not Orion, so finally something's not on them. It is a free choice of your people. This is somewhat difficult to explain. We shall attempt. The sexual energy transfers and blockages are more a manifestation or example of that which is more fundamental than the other way about. Therefore, as your people, as your peoples became open to the concept of bellicosity and the greed of ownership, these various distortions then began to filter through the tree of mind. Okay, I know where they're going. Through the tree of mind into body complex expressions, the sexual expression being basic to that complex. Thus, these sexual energy blockages, though Orion influenced and intensified, so they had somewhat to do with it, are basically the product of the beingness chosen freely by your people. This will be the final question unless we may speak further upon this question to clarify or answer any short queries before we close. I just need to know um, then if this works through the ra uh, racial memory and infects the entire population in some way. The racial memory contains all that has been experienced. Thus there is some, shall we say, contamination even of the sexual, this showing mostly in your own culture as a various predispositions to adversary relationships, or as you call them, marriages, rather than the free giving one to another in the love and light of the infinite creator. That was precisely the point that I was trying to make. Thank you very much. I do not wish to overtire the instrument. Okay, so um, I'm going to skip that part. So, all right. We will now continue with the material from the day before yesterday. So I think I'm going to label this like sexual energy section of the book or something. The subject is how sexual polarity acts as a catalyst in evolution and how to best make use of this catalyst. Going back to that material, I will, I will fill in a few gaps that we possibly do not understand too well at this point. Can you tell me the difference between orange and yellow ray activation? I'm going to work up from the red ray right uh, on through the violet. We have covered red ray, so I would like to ask now what the difference is between yellow and orange ray activation. The orange ray is that influence or vibratory pattern wherein the mind-body-spirit expresses its power on an individual basis. Thus power over individuals may be seen to be orange ray. This ray has been quite intense among your peoples on an individual basis. You may see in this ray the treating of other selves as non-entities, slaves, or chattel, thus giving other selves no status whatever. The yellow ray is a focal and very powerful ray, and concerns the entity in relation to, shall we say, groups, societies, or large numbers of mind-body-spirit complexes. This orange we correct ourselves, this yellow ray vibration, is at the heart of bellicose actions, in which one group of entities feels the necessity and right of dominating other groups of entities and bending their wills to the wills of the masters. The negative path, as you would call it, uses a combination of the yellow ray and the orange ray in its polarization patterns. These rays, used in a dedicated fashion, will bring about a contact with intelligent infinity. The usual nature of sexual interaction if one is yellow or orange in primary vibratory patterns, is one of blockage and then um, insatiable hunger due to the blockage, which I think in the last one we talked about, in the last um, reading. When there are two cells vibrating in this area, the potential for polarization through the sexual interaction is begun. One entity experiencing the pleasure of humiliation and slavery or bondage the other experiencing the pleasure of mastery and control over another entity. This way, a sexual energy transfer of a negative polarity is experienced. It's very interesting. For the material that you transmitted February 17th, you stated, In third ray, there are two possibilities. Firstly, if both vibrate in third ray, there will be a mutually strengthening energy transfer. What color is third ray in this material? 
The ray we were speaking of in that material should be properly the green ray or fourth ray. So I should change the so I should change that third to fourth or green. <clears throat> this is correct. Please continue to scan for errors having to do with numbering as you call them. As this concept is foreign to us and we must translate, if you will, when using numbers. This is an ongoing weakness of this contact due to the difference between our ray, our ways and yours. Sorry. Your aid is appreciated. I'm trying to read through this. I, I'm just I'm dealing with so much pain right now, guys, so I'm I'm trying as hard as I can. Thank you. I believe for the time being we have amply covered green ray, so I'm going to skip over green ray and go to blue ray. Could you tell me the difference between uh, tell me the difference that occurs between green ray and blue ray with the emphasis on blue ray. With the green ray transfer of energy, you now come to the great turning point sexually, as well as in each other mode of experience. The green ray may then be turned outward, the entity then giving rather than receiving. The first giving beyond green ray is the giving of acceptance or freedom thus allowing the recipient of blue ray energy transfer the opportunity for a feeling of being accepted, thus freeing that other self to express itself to the giver of this ray. It will be noted that once green ray energy transfers have been achieved by two mind-body spirits in mating, the further rays are available without both entities having the necessity to progress equally. Thus the blue ray vibrating entity or indigo ray vibrating entity whose other ray vibrations are clear may share that energy with the green ray other self, thus acting as catalyst for the continued learn teaching of the other self. Until an other self reaches green ray, such energy transfers through the rays is not possible. What is the difference between indigo and blue ray transfer? The indigo ray is a ray of, shall we say, awareness of the creator itself. Thus, one whose indigo ray vibrations have been activated can offer the energy transfer of creator to creator. This is the beginning of the sacramental nature of what you call your bisexual reproductive act. It is unique in bearing the allness, the wholeness, the unity in its offering to other self. What is the difference between violet ray and the others? The violet ray, just as the red ray, is constant in the sexual experience. Its experience by other self may be distorted or completely ignored or not apprehended by other self. However, the violet ray, being the sum and substance of the mind-body-spirit complex, surrounds and informs any action uh, by a mind-body-spirit complex. So... Do the energy transfers of this nature occur in the 5th, 6th, and 7th density? All the rays. The rays, as you understand them, have such a different meaning in the next density and the next and so forth that we must answer your query in the negative. Each, trans each transfer, or sorry, energy transfers only take place in 4th, 5th, and 6th densities. These are still of what you would call a polarized nature. However, due to the ability of these densities to see the harmonies between individuals, these entities choose those mates which are har harmonious, thus allowing constant transfer of energy in the propagation of the body complexes which each density uses. The process is different in the fourth and the sixth density than you may understand it. However, it is in these cases still based upon polarity. In the seven density, there is not this particular energy exchange. It is unnecessary to recycle body complexes. I am assuming we have on earth today and have had in the past fourth, fifth, and sixth density wanderers. As they come into incarnation in the physical of this density for a period as a wanderer, what types of polarizations with respect to these various rays do they find affecting them? I believe I grasp the, the thrust of your query. Please ask further if this answer is not sufficient. That was kind of confusing. Let me, let me slow that down a little bit. I am assuming that we have on Earth today 
and have had in the past fourth, fifth, and sixth density wanders. As they come into incarnation in the physical of this density for a period as a wanderer, what types of polarizations with respect to these rays do they find affecting them? So, fourth density wanderers, of which there are not many, will tend to choose those entities which seem to be full of love or in need of love. There is a great possibility, probability, of entities making errors in judgment due to the compassion with which other selves are viewed. The fourth density wanderer is one who is not tremendously affected by the stimulus of the various rays of other self and in its own way offers itself when the need is seen. Such entities are not likely to engage in the, shall we say, custom of your peoples called marriage, and are very likely to feel an aversion to childbearing and child raising due to the awareness of the Im, um, impropriety of the planetary vibrations relative to the harmonious vibrations of the density of light. The sixth density, whose means of propagation you may liken to what you call fusion, is likely to refrain to a great extent from the bisexual reproductive programming of the bodily complex, and instead seek out those with whom the sexual energy transfer is of the complete fusion nature, in so far as this is possible in manifestation in third density. Can you expand a little bit on what you mean by complete fusion nature? The entire creation is of the one creator. Thus the diversion of sexual activity is into simply that of the bodily complex is an artificial division. All things thusly being seen as sexual equally, the mind, the body, and the spirit, all of which are part of the polarity of the entity. Thus sexual fusion may be seen with or without what you may call sexual intercourse to be the complete melding of the mind, the body, and the spirit, and what feels to be a constant orgasm, shall we say, of joy and delight, each in the other's beingness. Would many wanderers of these densities have considerable problems with respect to incarnation in the third density because of this different orientation? The possibility, probability of such problems, as you may call them, due to sixth density incarnating in third, is rather large. It is not necessarily a problem if you will call it thusly. It depends upon the unique orientation of each mind-body-spirit complex having in this situation or placement of vibratory relativities. Can you give me an idea how the different colors... This is a difficult question to ask. I'm having trouble finding any words. What I'm trying to get at is how the different colors originate as the functions for the different expressions in consciousness. I don't know if this question is sufficient. I think that's a great question. This question is sufficiently clear for us to attempt explanation of what, as you have observed, is not easily grasped material for the intellectual mind. The nature of vibration is such that it may be seen as having mathematically straight or narrow steps. See if I can wear a hat without this hurting my head. Um, these steps may be seen as having boundaries. Within each boundary, there are infinite uh, gradations of vibration or color. However, as one approaches a boundary, an effort must be made to cross that boundary. These colors are a simplistic way of expressing the boundary um, divisions, I've never heard that word, of your density. There's also the time-space analogy, which may be seen as the color itself in a modified aspect. Thank you. Is it possible for an entity in third density physical to vary across the entire band of colors, or is the entity pretty well zeroed in on one color? This will be the last full question of this working. Please restate for clarity. I meant was it possible for a green ray person who is primarily of green ray activation to vary on both sides of the green ray in a large or a small amount in regards to energy activation, or is he prim uh, primarily green ray? I am Ra. We grasped the newness of material requested by you. It was unclear, for we thought we had covered this material. The portion covered is this. The green ray activation is always vulnerable to the yellow or orange ray of possession. 
this being largely yellow ray, but often coming into orange ray. Fear of possession, desire for possession, fear of being possessed, desire to be possessed. These are all the distortions which will cause the deactivation of green ray energy transfer, which makes sense. The new material is this. Once the green ray has been achieved, the ability of the entity to enter blue ray is immediate and is only awaiting the efforts of the individual. The indigo ray is opened only through considerable discipline and practice largely, having to do with acceptance of self, not only as the polarized and balanced self, but as the creator, as an entity of infinite worth. This will begin to activate the indigo ray. Um, thank you. Do you have any brief queries before we close? Okay, so that's the end of that session. So uh, I think I'm going to stop there. I just, I feel like I'm dying right now. I know I'm not, but my, I know my eye's not red right now, but it feels like it's on fire and I have all this pressure and right here it's just throbbing back and forth and, uh, so, um, if I go to the emergency room, I will put up a video or something. So, um, you guys, a lot of you guys know, if you want to contact me, you can go to my Facebook. So go to jake um laluya l-a-l-u-y-a and then you can add me as a friend if you want or you can message me so if i go i'll put a picture up there um or something so we'll see but even when i'm in pain you know i'm i'm a very humorous person so who knows i may end up putting up like a video in the hospital they're doing something funny i don't know um so whatever but i'm just i'm in so much pain so I'm going to go relax, guys. Um, so I will try to be back in a day or two and try to get better, see if I can be on here tomorrow. So um, I will keep you guys posted. So thank you for everything. I hope you guys have a good day. Um, if you guys are feeling anything weird, definitely let me know in the comments. Um, and let me know what you think about that whole YouTube thing I was talking about. Because I really honestly feel like that's the whole thing, what they're going for. I think they're trying to find another way to basically um, sensitize stuff even more with this material, this content, you know, of stuff. So, uh, yeah, let me know what you think. So, all right, guys, have a good day. I will be back soon. Much love, blessings, and um, infinite light to you guys. So, all right, keep shining, guys. Thank you.